more than he's used to. Well, they're getting ready to come out onto the track here. Over in turn number two. Of course, they're waiting for J.C. Morton to get belted in for his ride. And this 20 laps will decide it here tonight. Well, Shane, we got a great field getting ready to start. You talk about first-time driver. Well, he's not definitely a first-time driver. Flying Brian Allison on the pole for today. Former MLRA uh, winner and uh, regular on the series. And from Marshall, Missouri. And uh, Brian, tone it back a little bit on the racing, but he's down here with us week in, week out. Okay, so for the B mods. Whenever we all picked who we thought would uh -huh. win, you went first, I went last. So we're going to reverse that. Good I'll enough. go first. Justin Wells is going to be my <laughs> pick. We'll get the grid set for you 20 times around. Doug, why don't you start out with the front row? All right. It's going to be flying Brian Allison, the 1A from Marshall, Missouri, on the bowl. Justin Wells, Aurora, Missouri, in that 98 uh, on the outside. After the redraw, the Capital Kid, Tucker Cox, will start inside row number two. Best finish for the season on him is second. He will start in third. And Jason Civils out of Bolivar, Missouri, outside of him, he will start in fourth. Larry Ferris, the Nevada, Missouri, 51. And Tommy Cordray, Browning, Missouri, former track champion on the five car, row number three. Jim Greenway out of Galena, Missouri, will start in seventh. And Chase Breed out of Madison, Missouri. First time he's been here to Lucas Oil Speedway in a late model. The third generation driver will start in eighth. Ed Knoll, the loss of Missouri 15 on a night spot. And in tenth, it is Jimmy Dow as he goes to the outside of row number five in the 81 car and from Boonville. Second race of the year here at Lucas Oil Speedway for Frank Escamilla out of Ni Niangua, Missouri in the 73, and Larry Jones to his outside. He is out of El Dorado Springs, Missouri in the 99. Here next row on the inside, J.C. Morton, the 72 from Springfield, Missouri in the Moon Brothers ride. And on the outside, Landon McLaughlin, the Aurora, Missouri 17. Back in starting in 15th, he calls Mount Air, Iowa. His home, that is PG double three. Paul Glendening in the 33, a black diamond chassis. Wife and kids are off at a Taylor Swift concert, and he's here at Wheatland. Outside of him is Old Smokey, Darren Phillips, out of Wheatland, Missouri, in the 21P. He's probably spending less money than they are. <laughs> I the guarantee you. He might make some. In the 17th, it is Jared Ballard, the Hallsville, Missouri, 98. And on the outside, that is Josh Newman, Fulton, Missouri's 40. Big Show Bob Cummings out of Sedalia, Missouri, will start in 19th. And Joe Walkenhorst, who has had a top five every single race this year, he's starting back in 20th. Your final row, Caden Glatt, the Edina, Missouri, the youngster on the 50 car, and the flash, Johnny Fenewald, of course, not making the call. Johnny Fenewald just entered, wanted to get a couple of points by entering tonight anyway. Didn't have his car ready to roll, but 21 other Hermitage Lumber late models do. The Bill Roberts Chevrolet pace truck, lights are turned off, has gone to the top side over in turns one and two. He will head back to the pit area and fly in Brian Allison. Out of Marshall, Missouri, will have the field in tow. He will set it up in the 1A. Outside of him is Justin Wells. Side by side, Tucker Cox and Jason Sevels back behind him. Through turns three and four, they see the orange cone. Step down on the loud pedal. We're underway for the late models as they get loud here at Lucas. Now as they come out of turn number two, it's going to be the 1A of flying Brian Allison on the point. The 98 of Justin Wells in that second spot as they come through. The Jeff City Kid, Tucker Cox, the 1T in third. My pick, the 51, that's Larry Ferris, the Veda, Missouri native, now moves up into that four spot battle for fifth between the 28th and 17th as they come out of turn number four. 
clean air is king for Justin Wells. When he gets out in front, he is typically able to just blow away from the rest of the field. But if you look back and remember to whenever J.C. Morton won on Thursday Night Thunder, he was in front of Justin Wells. And while Justin may have had a faster car in weeks gone by, getting up to J.C. Morton and making the pass was two completely different things. Justin Wells has had his hands full with Brian Allison, but finally will clear him on the backstretch. On lap number four, the Boone's Barbecue Caution will come out. Four cars involved over in turn number two. Darren Phillips, part of that. Frank Escamilla, Jill Walkenhorst, as well as the 98 Ballard. of J Jarrett Ballard, yep. the fourth car involved. Walkenhorst back up and under power as they go through. Ballard still now is rolling. Only one. Everybody back up and under power as they uh, get ready to roll off of turn number two. Damage to the left rear of Darren Phillips. He had a lot of damage to his car two weeks ago. Had to go to work on it to make it out for Thursday Night Thunder. Some of the crew here at Lucas Oil Speedway will go out and make sure he's not going to have a tire rub. We got to see half the car. One half looks pretty good. Back half does not. <laughs> well, Justin Wells on the point, as you said, uh, here tonight. The 98 from Aurora, Missouri. He's got flying Brian Allison, the 1A from Marshall, Missouri, in that second spot. The 1A T of Tucker Cox. The Jeff City Kid in third. Larry Ferris, the Nevada, Missouri native, in fourth. And round out your top five, that is the 28 of Jim Greenlee. Greenlee, the Galena, Missouri native. By the way, J.C. Morton started 13th up to 8th, up five spots in three laps. Darren Phillips had jumped up four spots. He and Joe Walkenhorst, but they were both involved in that incident over there in turn number two. Fastest lap so far has been turned in by Justin Wells, a 17.648. There you see Larry Ferris, two-time winner. Got to celebrate once. Got to celebrate posthumously once after a DQ. Gave him his second victory of the year. He totes along in fourth. Give Jim Greenway a nod, the Galena, Missouri native, who has yet to win this season. Two top fives. He won last year in a modified at Springfield, and there you see Tucker Cox. He, my friend, was making some hay, catching up with Justin Wells and Brian Allison on that last lap right before the caution came out. That one T was actually starting to catch up with those top two cars. Well, we talked about Paul Glendening. A uh, gentleman here um, from Iowa, he started 15th up to 13th, in, in, uh, so he's gained two positions in three laps. Not too bad. Hopefully he can do a little bit better. Justin Wells, front row, all to his own. Brian Allison to the inside. A pair of aces sit back in row number two. Tucker Cox to his outside. You'll see Justin Wells and the yellow stays out. Thought we were about ready to get back underway, but we'll have at least one more lap before the green flag falls again. Wind's starting to die down. I asked Justin Wells a couple of weeks ago on one of the days that we had probably 30 mile an hour winds. We've had some very blustery days early on in the racing season. Asked him how much effect it has. You know, on a bigger track, it has more of effect with the way the stands are on the back stretch and the front stretch, you don't see it much, but you'll hear late model drivers talk about big wins in open racetracks. It really makes a lot of drag. Gives you about five extra mile per hour down the straightaway whenever you have that tailwind. And Brian Allison, what a whole shot on the restart. And Justin Wells has dropped anchor. He's back to fourth, fifth, sixth. Something is broken on the 98. 
and he's got to get out of harm's way. He is about to get ran over by this entire field of cars. Looked like the car stalled out on him. I don't know if he's got it fixed yet. No, he doesn't. He's trying to get everybody past. Now he's trying to get that car refired, I believe. That is Justin Wells, the 98. He had the hand out the window, and now Larry Ferris has gotten past the pair of aces. Flies around Brian Allison, gets around the 1T of Tucker Cox, and now Larry Ferris sees the opening, and he marches right through it, and Justin Wells will march back to the pit area. So is that the announcer's jinx? I would say so. He was looking pretty sporty up until that restart, and it just did not go for Justin Wells. He's going to head it back to the pits. His night is done. But Larry Ferris on the other side, his night is just beginning. He's got seven laps in, 13 to go here tonight on the point. And this is what we saw Larry Ferris do all last year, get out in front and just completely check out and leave everybody wondering why they can't be as fast as the 51. Well, 1.2 1. seconds over Tucker Cox. One not wondering that right now is the 72 of J.C. Morton. Morton on the move, <laughs> on the high side, as he keeps gaining positions all the way around turns three and four. He's up to four. He will split the wicket. He's got the slower car of the 28 to the inside and he will get up to the third spot. He's gonna get around Big Show Bob Cummings. One of the cars going a lap down, and Brian Allison will get collected with Bob Cummings. Allison with a great run on the night, but he got into Bob Cummings and got turned around. Trying to hold on to J.C. Morton and got into the side of Bob Cummings when that happened. Well, J.C. Morton didn't think he had a chance to get through the field and win this, starting all the way back in 13th with the caliber of drivers up in front of him. He is blazing fast right now. Justin Wells had the fastest lap back on lap two of 17.648. Larry Ferris, second fastest lap, and J.C. Morton in third. So wow. the Moon Brothers racing ride continues to be sporty fast, and that is with J.C. Morton in lap traffic the entire time. Justin Wells wasn't in lap traffic whenever he turned his fast lap. Same thing for Larry Ferris. Well, J.C. Morton, everybody was on that low side in three and four going around that corner. J.C. Morton hung it off the end over in three and four, and he was fast, passed about three cars just in between turns three and four as he went around. Unless somebody has some pretty fancy hand signals in the crew of Larry Ferris over on the back stretch, or Larry was able to look up on the Jumbotron, he may not know how fast J.C. Morton is. I'm telling you, if he does, he's shaking in his boots right now. If he doesn't, he may learn really quick. J.C. Morton on the takeoff, I would say he is going to get his hands full of uh, Tucker Cox and be on the back bumper of JC of uh, Larry Ferris shortly. They'll start two wide back behind Larry Ferris whenever they do decide to double them up. And it looks like Tucker Cox is going to take the low side on that row, which puts JC Morton on the high side where he wants to start. This may get interesting real quick. And unfortunately, Brian Allison not out there. Yeah, that was the heart. Well, Brian Allison, they're going to 
at least the way they line up right now. He is starting inside row four. Well, yellow is out. We're going to go green flag out of turn number four. Larry Ferris brings him around. He controls the start. He comes into four. Green flag in the air. Does J.C. Morton have enough to get around Larry Ferris? The way he was marching through the field, common sense would tell you yes. And my friends, common sense should be common. Here comes J.C. Morton. Larry Ferris tries to take the line away from him, and he will. J.C. Morton tries to do too much, jumps the cushion, and three cars all get by him. One of those is Tommy Cordray, the former champion here at Lucas Hall Speedway, the young gun. That is Tucker Cox, the J.C. kid, in that second spot. Now Morton is in the middle of a three wide between Cordray, Allison, and he is in the center. Tommy Cordray working his way up. It is Tucker Cox. Cox coming back to us after a horrendous crash earlier this year. Now it is Larry Ferris, the 51, and he is enjoying being out front, letting everybody else battle behind. Boy, that one little error that J.C. Morton had pretty much ruined his run to the front. With eight laps to go, seven to go this time around, and J.C. does it again. He gets way up in the loose stuff again. He'll get enough of a run off of four to dispose of Brian Allison, shoot back down to the inside to try to make some hay on Tommy Cordray, but that won't work either. That bobble may have sealed the deal for Larry Ferris. He is now out by almost three seconds over Tucker Cox and Tommy Cordray. So as they come around, it is Larry Ferris, your leader, Tucker Cox in second, Cordray in third, Morton in fourth. If he could split the wicket between the five and the one and get through that traffic, he might have something for Larry Ferris. Uh, it'd have to be a caution that comes out that it is almost an entire straightaway advantage right now that Larry Ferris has over Tucker Cox, Tommy Cordray, and J.C. Morton. Tommy Cordray in the five, starts up top, angles back down, gets right up to the back bumper of the 1T of Tucker Cox, then shoots back up the track again with four to go. Larry Ferris's lead, 3.1 seconds over Tucker Cox. Bob Cummings again will go a lap down. He goes to the top side, lets the cars go underneath him. And that is where Brian Allison made his error. And he was trying to go to the outside of Bob Cummings with two laps to go. Lead lap cars do indeed all get around the six of Cummings. Ferris's lead now 3.3 seconds. Tommy Cordray, a good run up into second. White flag out for Larry Ferris. He doesn't have to worry about any more lap traffic at all on the back stretch, entering turn three and four. Larry Ferris has ridden the roller coaster. He's had his highs, he's had his lows, but tonight he wins for the third time at Lucas Oil Speedway over Tommy Cordray and Tucker Cox.